Hello, my name is Michelle Morand. I'm a precision cancer medicine educator and advocate, and I'm here with precision cancer medicine research expert, Alexander Rowland, and he has prepared a presentation for you today, um, specifically of interest to people who either have kidney cancers or have a history of this in family or know somebody who's struggling with this, an exciting new development in treatment of a previously really difficult cancer. Um, Alex, take it away. Tell us all about this new therapy. Yeah, so this is a CAR-T therapy for solid tumors. It's one of the first times a CAR-T therapy has actually been found to be effective in solid tumors. Um, and in this particular case, it was for a type of kidney cancer that is very hard to treat and is often very treatment resistant. So this is exciting on two different levels. Um, the main level it's exciting is that, you know, we have a CAR-T therapy for solid tumors now. So I get a lot of calls about CAR T therapy, um, and uh, I think it's important to cover, you know, what that is and how it works. So um, basically, CAR T therapy works on the T cells. Uh, T cells are cells that protect us against infections and cancers. There's two types of T cells um, that we are interested in in cancer, and that's the CD4 positive T regs, uh, regulatory T cells, and the CD8 positive tumor infiltrating tumor cells called TILs. Uh, chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, are synthetic receptors that redirect and reprogram these immune cells to target tumor cells. Um, receptors are part of a cell used to interact with other cells. Um, I like to think of them as a, as a loading dock of a furniture store, you know, where you, you purchase your, your couch or whatever you're purchasing in the showroom, and then you drive around to the back of the building, and um, the uh, loading dock is kind of the area where things come in and out of the store. Um, it's the same with a cell. So think of a, a receptor as a loading dock of a cell. So receptors have uh, something called a ligand that attaches to them to activate them, much like a lock and a key. So uh, receptors are basically like a lock and a key with the receptor being the lock and the ligand being the key. So here's a little diagram. Uh, you can see the ligand in blue up there. And this is the two, this is a cell or whatever cell it is. Um, this is the uh, receptor and it spans across the external membrane, and it has an internal portion and an external portion. So basically the ligand um, attaches to the receptor. And then as you can see, there's a little change here where it's changed the internal part, and that has turned on the cell to create a different function. So basically it's like a light switch that turns on the cell to, to have some function. CAR T therapy has typically been used for lymphomas or B cell cancers. Um, in short, T cells are removed and altered to target a specific molecule, a feature on the tumor cell. Um, in most cases, it's been something called CD19 or cluster of differentiation 19. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but in short, um, they take out these T cells that um, normally attack, you know, uh, the normally involved in, in preventing cancers and so on. Um, and then they grow these in the lab and they change them. They alter them um, and change them and grow them in the lab. And then the patient is given a combination of chemo drugs that kills off the normal lymphocytes. And then these altered super CAR T cells are injected back into the patient. So until recently, the main target has been a cell surface receptor called cluster of differentiation 19. And um, that's because CAR T cells have been mostly used for B cell malignancies and lymphomas as most of these B cell tumors have high expression of the CD19. So one of the things that has made CAR T cells effective in lymphomas is that uh, basically this is a disease of one type of cell, uh, the B cells, and most of these lymphomas have high expression of CD19. And so it means that the CAR T therapy will be effective for them. However, um, while it's been very effective, this CAR T technology has been very effective for lymphomas, I think there's at least three different approved CAR T um, therapies for lymphomas. Um, it's not been very effective in solid tumors. Um, and this is mostly mostly based on the fact that lymphomas are a single type of cell, a B cell. So, you know, it's it's easier for the immune system just to target one type of cell. CAR T has failed in solid tumors due to a, the complexity of solid tumors. Um, and there's a lot of different things going on that result in a large, um, for example, target diversity. In other words, solid tumors have many different drivers. There's a lot of tumor heterogeneity, which is variation between the individual tumor cells within a tumor and with uh, between different tumors throughout the body. 
And then there's also this um, important complex microenvironment surrounding the tumor where the tumor recruits immune cells and other cells to help it grow. Um, and then there's many interacting cells in that tumor microenvironment that really um, help the tumor and prevent treatment. So because of these factors, CAR-T has never really worked well in solid tumors. However, that has changed with the recent COBOL RCC study. Um, in this particular case, they use something called CRISPR. Pretty well, everyone knows about CRISPR. CRISPR is just basically a way of gene editing. It allows you to um, select a piece of a DNA and insert another piece of DNA using a, a viral, uh, some viral proteins. Um, and it allows you to basically re-engineer uh, cells by, by adding DNA from other cells or, you know, different genes and so on. So in this particular case, um, they looked at patients with advanced clear, clear renal cell carcinoma and um, the, the CAR T therapy is called CTX130. What this does is it targets something called CD70, cluster of differentiation 70. And this is the ligand or the key for a receptor called CD27. Um, and this CD27 receptor has expression on activated T cells. Um, and is, it's also highly expressed in certain tumors, such as clear, clear cell uh, renal carcinoma. Mm. So this is one of the first CAR T therapies um, targeting this CD70. And I'll show you how this works. So normal mechanism of CD70, uh, what happens is CD70 binds to the CD27 receptor. Um, and you can see that here. It's the activated lymph sites and the uh, naive memory and T cells. And basically, it, um, these activated lymphocytes will activate these naive and memory T cells, resulting in an immune response that's called T cell post stimulation. And so now you have this act, you know, these cells have to be turned on. Um, and this is important because if your immune system was turned on all the time, then we'd have all kinds of problems. But um, what happens here is uh, these activated lymphocytes will check out the tumor, they'll see what it's like, and then they'll see that, okay, we've got we've to target it. And this is how they do that in a normal functioning uh, environment. However, um, what happens in cancer um, is the CD70 is highly expressed on, on certain tumor cells. And so you can see this blue tumor cell right here. Um, that's a, a kidney tumor cell. And it has a lot of this CD70. And what happens is rather than just activating the T cells, um, it actually causes them to burn out. And that's called T cell exhaustion. So it tells so many T cells to get active that it actually wipes out the entire T cell population. So there's no more left. And then that can also result in T cell death, also known as apoptosis. But it also causes expansion of a type of altered T cell, the T regs, um, they're called T regulatory cells, CD4 positive, that the tumors end up recruiting for their own use. And you could see those on the bottom. So, so the consequence of having high CD70 on a tumor cell rather than immune cell um, is it causes T cell exhaustion on the bottom here. Um, and then T cell ap apoptosis. And then it creates a subpopulation of TREGs, which are bad cells. Um, normally, TREGs are good cells, but um, cancer cells recruit those T regs and use them for their own purpose. Mm -hmm. So, does this process make more T regs or it just prevents the normal processes? That's a great question. Um, it actually creates more T regs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and these T regs wow. are um, recruited by the tumor cells. Wow. Their... So it wipes, so it wipes out the healthy T cells and it makes exactly. more of the cells that the cancer needs to grow. Yeah, exactly. Great okay, explanation. Yeah. So um, here's a diagram of this CTX130. And so basically what they did was they, they used this CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology, and they took these uh, CAR T cells um, mm -hmm. from healthy donors. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they destructed um, certain genes called the TRAC the B, or the beta 2M, and the CD70 uh, loci just means the area where those genes are. So they interrupted those, and instead they put this special anti-CD70 CAR, uh, CAR T cassette directly into it. So they actually disrupted certain genes and then added their own special genes in there. And then what happens is they, they grow these up in the lab, 
And so they have a, a nice big supply of them. And so when it comes to treating the patient, basically what they do is they just do this lymphodepleting chemo where they kill off the, you know, the, some of the immune cells in the patient, and then they inject these cells directly into them. So the results of this study were um, very interesting. Uh, in this study, I think it was about 16 patients, but 81% of these patients experienced a clinical benefit of some sort, you know, some sort of tumor shrinkage. 75% had stable disease. And then one patient experienced a durable, complete response for over three years. So um, the, the safety profile was very acceptable with this. Um, and minimal side effects. So um, while this is just a phase one trial, I think this is really a game changer um, because now we have uh, finally figured out how to tap into CAR T for solid tumors. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just the floodgates are going to be opened as with the antibody drug conjugates. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing new technology that's going to create uh, a big change for people with cancer. All the solid tumors. Um, solid tumors, yeah. Yeah. So this is, as you mentioned, the ADCs. the The whole thing there was um, the mechanism mm -hmm. for for uh, identifying the cancer cells and deli delivering the treatment. And that's what you're saying here is now we understand the mechanism um, for solid tumors yeah. to be able to use this process. Um, and, and essentially how the cancer works around it as well, which is really interesting. So that yeah. well, in reverse, we understand how the cancer is kind of recruiting these cells and what it's doing to shut down your immune system. Um, and then we also have this new approach now um, that can help you to have obviously some significant benefit in, in cases where previously there really wouldn't have been a lot of options. Yeah. And, and I think you really hit the nail on the head there is it's really all about understanding the defined mechanism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's what precision oncology is, is you start with a defined mechanism. You don't go with statistics, you go with the defined mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then you apply that to the right patient at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where the genetic testing comes in. So um, obviously, this is phase one. So it's early days. Um, we do have some connections with clinical trials. Um, so if this is something that you want to look into, obviously reach out and let us know and we can connect you. What kind of testing would a patient need in order to know if this was even relevant for them? That's an excellent question. Um, I'm, I should have I should have mentioned that. Um, basically, you would look at your tumor. And you would want to do RNA expression testing, or you'd want to look at, you know, your level. Basically, you'd want to look at your level of your of your CD seventy gene. Okay, and, and is that something sure that's done? In, sorry, I cut you off. What? You want to make sure the CD seventy gene is overexpressed in the tumor. Okay, and that's where the RNA that expression the testing comes in. Yeah, so you could do that in two ways. You can do that by taking a tumor sample and using basically immunohistochemistry, where you use an antibody for the CD70 protein, and you stain the cells and count the amount of them and, and come up with a number that way. Um, we like to use expression, um, RNA expression testing. Uh, I, I find that, you know, that is a superior uh, mechanism, because it really tells you what the cancer is trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you count the amount of of RNA molecules. And the other thing too, the other advantage is, you know, we could test, you know, just under 21,000 different genes with one tumor sample. Whereas if you use immunohistochemistry and basic pathology, you're getting a small sample of the tumor, um, but also you're, you're wasting that part of the tumor on just one test. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if so folks many want antibody to... drug conjugates and so many different potential targets, you want to know what all of the options are. Yeah. So the so the uh, genome wide twenty one thousand RNA expression test would be the way to find out if this or multitudes of other of these new treatments that Alex is always going on about the ADCs, targeted therapies, immune therapies, a combination therapies, all the stuff. Um, what would suit you? And that data then allows your doctor to do better by you. It allows you more rapid and easy uptake into clinical trials if in fact that's the best place for you. Um, so highly recommend that. Thank yeah. you, Alex. This is ve very helpful information. And I'm, I just, I'm excited. Obviously, every time we have these calls, I'm excited um, mm -hmm. because of all the new things that are coming out. This one specifically, I can understand why you're excited about. Um, 
your own personal experience as a cancer patient with yes, cancer exactly. is obviously yeah. very personally relevant. Yes, it also is. Also, the yes. fact that this is not just specific to kidney cancer, but mm -hmm. these mechanisms can then be utilized for all solid tumors. Um, so that it, it's very exciting in yeah. terms of the options that it's going to bring people in the very near future. Yeah. And one other thing I just want to mention, Michelle, um, since you're since you're on the subject, uh, as of um, I believe today, the FDA has a, approved TDXD or NHER2, the antibody drug conjugate for HER2, um, for any solid tumor. That uh, that approval through Project uh, Orbit just went through today. So so yeah. now if you have a HER2 positive tumor, doesn't matter what type of tumor it is, uh, you can get NHER2 the antibody drug conjugate with bystander effect. It's FDA approved, agnostic approval. This is a game changer. That's wonderful. And it's just the, it, it, there's just more of this type of thing coming folks in terms of these agnostic approvals yes. um, because these genes are not specific to one type of cancer. That's the that's the point. Her two Alex has made a wonderful video about her two um, on the Cancer Guy channel. You're welcome to email me if you want me to send you a link. But it, it's expressed in so many cancers, not just specifically the female reproductive or breast breast cancer. So um, very exciting. It'll be so much easier for us to help patients get access to that treatment. All right, we digress. Okay. Point is, if you want our help, here's some information about how you can have a one hour consultation with Alex. It's a very thorough, very detailed process. Um, you're welcome to join uh, my Cancer Just the Facts Advocacy and Education Program. Alex pops in every week for a live Zoom to answer your questions. And there's lots of information about precision cancer medicine and how you can advocate successfully with your doctor for it. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay informed. We'll see you next time.